Because the Arctic Ocean is changing very rapidly, we really desperately need baseline information on physical circulation, chemistry, and physics and biology of the Arctic. We participated in a series of research cruises this summer from July through to October. There were about 40 scientists and probably about that many crews, so close to about 100 people on the ship. And it was a large range of expertise and research activities going on. We do a lot of work, for example, studying phytoplankton, which are microscopic algae, where we have high rates of photosynthesis. The phytoplankton are removing a large quantity of CO2 from the surface waters. So understanding what controls that biological carbon pump really helps us to understand how marine ecosystems, marine organisms can control the exchange of carbon dioxide between the atmosphere and the surface ocean. And that is of course important in what we call the global climate cycle and the regulation of our Earth's temperatures. About two weeks into the cruise, we were on our way north to the next station and we got a call from Coast Guard office in Ottawa essentially directing to proceed at full steam to Hudson Bay to assist with ice breaking operations. We would arrive and there would be three or four vessels waiting just outside of the pack ice zone and we would break a trail through the ice and they would just follow in right behind us. And these are communities that are quite dependent on resupply for things like fuel, for example. And so in the presence of heavy sea ice, their vital link to these supplies is potentially jeopardized. So we spent quite a long time doing that and obviously not conducting any of our scientific operations. The resolution of this is that the other group that was sharing the vessel with us, the group from ArcticNet, very kindly and very graciously suspended most of their sampling operations just so that we would have the time needed to essentially recoup the amount that we had lost. So there are some real questions, I think, to be addressed about the persistent challenges that still face Canadian science and Canadian logistical support in the north. Fortuitously, as it turns out, the detour that we took to go into Hudson Bay took us through Hudson Strait, where we saw some of the most interesting oceanographic conditions due to tidal mixing and so on. And the result was that I think we've been very successful in pulling off a, a really ambitious and I think ultimately very successful program.